happy 13th birthday jewellery maker, you are officially a teenager. Over the last 13 years you have brought us the most amazing products and fantastic inspiration. So thank you so much and have a wonderful birthday. I'm very excited to come and celebrate with you. Hi, Charlie here, Summer Street Director. Just wanted to wish Jewelry Maker a happy 13th birthday. Hi, you lovely people. Happy 13th birthday. Love seeing you when we take over from me at one o'clock each day. Have a great time. Keep on making. The deal of the day on Friday is a conch collection, which comprises of a kit with three strands of conch in. Um, we've also got new development of carved conch, and we've also got a few individual pieces, collectible pieces, such as a donut. So for us to get conch into the business, it's a really long process. As we do with all our suppliers, we wanna make sure it's ethically sourced, it's being produced in um, factories where you know everyone's being treated correctly. Um, with conch, it's obviously a natural product so it takes us a little bit longer because we have to fill in extra paperwork get extra certification and it can take us about um, six or seven months to actually get it here so this collection has been in development for a really long time and I can't wait to bring it to the customers at Jewelry Maker Good morning, jewellery makers. So, this morning, for the birthday box, we are on number 12. So it's a little bit different today. So if we have a look, and we'll see what we've got. So if we open this up, it's very full. Give it a wiggle. Let's get it out. See what we've got in here. Here we are. So what is it? So it's not vest and pants, although it looks like it. But you have got lots of different polishing cloths. So this is, if we have a look through them, so we've got a uh, gold cloth, watch polishing cloth. We've got a bigger one here. Let's have a look at this one. It's a nice size, this one. This is a silver cloth. See the next one. And we've got stainless steel polishing cloths. Again, a large one here. So with these polishing cloths, they are all very usefully labelled so you know which one you can use on what. Um, the, the, it's, not, it's not a difference in them. They're all the same polishing cloth, but it means that you can then be super organised when you're cleaning your jewellery. So if we're thinking about it, what we're going to do for the hour this morning, it'd be pretty boring if I just polished and polished and polished and polished a lot of jewellery or watches or different metals. So what I thought I'd do is um, show you the polishing and how we can do some basic uh, polishing with them. But then I thought I'd also take it a stage back um, and how you can maybe do some filing and cleaning up and then some polishing as well. So polishing with the cloths, maybe polishing with some hand tools, the Dremel, if you've got a Dremel, we can have a look at how we set the Dremel up. Um, tools that you can get that are specifically for jewellery, and then also tools that you can buy very, very reasonably um, that you can, you know, maybe uh, uh, for nails, things like that. So they're, they're really useful too. So that's what we're going to do this morning. So if I just pop those there, and we'll have a look at some of the things that we're going to work with. So if we look on the board we can see. So I've got a variety of uh, bits and pieces here. So we can, um, we can work with some needle files. These are these ones here. So very, very fine files. If we've got a lot of work to do, say maybe we've got um, some really rough areas on the pieces, we might want to just work with this file. You see this is much chunkier. What we need to think about is if we're going to use something that's abrasive on the silver, 
Uh, what we want to be really, really careful about is not introducing loads and loads of scratches that we then need to get out. So we're sort of going to use these maybe with, with caution, with care. We don't want to get too enthusiastic with them. We've also got, um, we're going to work with this. So we might, we'll, we'll probably work and maybe make a ring. And so this is going to be really, really useful. So this is like um, an emery stick that is really, really good for working if you're going to uh, make rings because obviously you can work on the inside of the ring and we've got these different grades and we'll go through that when we use it. These are the, uh, the sort of the emery sticks that I was talking about, the buffers. Um, and these are uh, say one pound from, uh, you know, sort of like your one pound shops. And these are very, very good for um, buffing your nails. So if you, if you do, if you manicure your nails, these work really well on that, but they also work very, very well on polishing up your silver or filing and prepping, cleaning it. And they're also very good because they're all numbered, so you can just sort of work your way through them. So that's those. Then if you feel more comfortable, uh, what you can do as well, and we'll have a look at these, are lots, there are lots and lots of different attachments uh, that you can get for your, for your Dremel. So different uh, abrasive wheels, and you can see, Different, um, different attachments here. We've got a silicon one as well. We've got a brass one, we've got nylon heads, and we've got some mops here as well. So we've got some felt mops and some slightly, um, uh, some fabric ones as well. We can also work with these with uh, different compounds. So we can work with the polishing jewelers rouge as well. So I think that's pretty much it of, of what we're going to work with. So if you want to just, uh, I've also got some, some different pieces of jewellery uh, in various stages, uh, so we can polish those up too. So if we have a look, uh, so if we go with the first thing, so if we take it as um, you don't want to work with uh, any of these tools that I've just gone through and you just want to have a go at, at polishing pieces, let's have, if we have a look and see how, the, um, see how they go. So the first one we've got, if we'll have a look at mine, is the, uh, the gold cloth. Okay, so we'll take that one. So I've got a bangle here. So let's have a look. So all I'm going to do is... So if we have a look at it first, maybe you can see it's a bit, it's a bit grubby. I probably wear this all the time. So yeah, let's, don't really take this one off very often. So let's give that something really, really satisfying about if you start off with, you know, a bit of a mucky piece of jewelry and you're going to get it nice and clean. So you can see it's already starting. You can see on there that, so that's to be expected. We can see, so see how this is really working nicely. So we'll do half of it and then we'll see what the other, a nice shiny side compared to, so look how beautifully that's coming up compared to that very, very dull. I might actually have to do that because that's going to, we're going to see the contrast. So you can see how easily these work coming up really, really nicely. So I'm just working my way around. There we are. We can see how nicely that is. Makes a big difference, you know, especially if, you, if you've made a piece of jewellery. You really want to pay attention to, um, you know, uh, lots of jewellery appeals to our inner magpie, doesn't it? That we want that nice, bright, sparkly piece of jewellery. So, you, would, you know, you don't want to sort of made it and then, and then don't finish that, that end piece. You can see how lovely that looks now. So that's with the, that's with the, the gold. You can see how, how nice that looks there. So that's if you just want to use your cloths as they are, so they come out of the packet, and I'm just using it like that. And, and like I say, so they're all, they're all labelled so that you can use them, be super organised. So yeah, look at that now, look at all of that, the difference on there. So there we go. So if, you, um, if we do the same, so I've, I've done the gold, so let's go through and we'll have a look at the, at the silver. So you can, you can see I've been using these throughout the week and they are really, really great. So let's have a look now. If I go to something like, um, so if I go to this one, so this is a finished, finished piece of jewellery. And you can see on this side, so I've started to, uh, to polish that one up compared to this really not great side there. So again, let's have a look. So if I pop it in here. And I'm really, so I'm holding and working quite firmly. And already I can see that coming up really beautifully. So if I give that a nice polish. 
So like I say, it's a very, very satisfying process because at the end of it, you can see how very, very different all your hard work has made. So if I just keep giving this a nice rub, we can see that is coming up beautifully. So we can also just tuck this in and give that there. So again, let's give that a nice polish and we can see how beautifully that's coming up. So that's just with, you know, what's that? Probably not even a minute of, of, of doing that. And you can see how great that looks. So you see, so I've gone through, I've gone through the, um, the two cloths there. So like I say, it's not that they're um, impregnated with anything special that you can only use on one particular uh, piece, but it's just good to be organized. Like, you know, if you, if you are sort of um, working with your, maybe your copper, your gold, your silver, it's just nice to be able to keep everything separate. And so you have got one for everything there. So let's keep, do the sides on here. It's looking really good now. You can go in right in there. Let's give that a nice rub there. And we can see how that's looking. So again, so that's using and, and showing you how with the, the silver and the gold, how great that looks now. So that's just using them as, as basics when they're, um, when they're coming out of the packet. So if you just wanted to use them like that, absolutely no problem. But if you want to maybe think about taking it a stage further, um, and so it's not just on uh, maybe a piece of jewellery that you have in your collection, maybe it's pieces of jewellery that you've, uh, you've made yourself. Um, and so we'll take it a few stages back. So the, these are the, so these cloths are the, really the last thing we're gonna do. So if we, if we really, really take it back to the very, very beginning of the piece of jewellery, and we can see what we go through uh, and what stages we work through to get it to that nice shine. And so it's about, it's about shine and getting it smooth, no scratches, um, for aesthetics, but also if you're wearing a piece of jewellery, you don't really want, you know, you don't want scratches uh, in it, do you? So if we have a start, so I'm going to move these out of the way, move those over there. So if we think about... Um, if I show you how maybe if you want to set up your Dremel, that might be um, an idea. And then we can, we, it's all set up, then we know how to use it. Um, and then we can use a variety of tools and we work on the ring that we're going to make. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of different sorts of Dremels. Um, and it's entirely up to you uh, which, which way you would use. So I've got my uh, pendant motor Dremel set up here just for ease so that when I'm talking to you and demonstrating, I can just use it with my foot. So the, the control is down here. Um, and it's that, that, so that's the Dremel I'm going to be using just for ease what, so I can talk to you uh, freely. We've got um, Dremel, I think, uh, coming on later. So this is a really, really great Dremel. Now, what you're going to get with this Dremel is you can either have it as the, the larger uh, unit, which is this bit here. And again, you've got that, that hook. So you could hook it up like my one to make, turn it into almost like that, that pendant mode. So it's hanging up. But then obviously what you want to do is you want to have something that attaches to here. So this is where that flex shaft comes in. So you can see that comes really comes into its own. So if you're thinking about you wanting to file or polish with one of the uh, the tools that you know the, the ends that we're going to work with here, you can see. So if you've got it in your hand like that, it's going to be a lot easier to work with, much lighter, and that's where it was really really useful to have that that flex shaft there. So you can see. So that would what what it's going to do, and you'll see lots of demonstrations about this later. Is you're basically going to take the end off here. That, this bit here and that will attach on there that's going to hang up the motor in here will turn all the way there's a long cable going through there you can just see that that rod coming out of the, of the flex shaft there and that's going to then turn and power whichever maybe it's a, one of the mop heads you're going to um, use or uh, if we have a look at this so you can see there this one here for example the brass one so it's going to power that 
So that's how your Dremel works. You'll also um, get in your Dremel, so you'll get different attachments. So if we see, and I'm going to use some of these. So th this is the one, the studio one. These are the ones that um, I use at home. But have a quick look, and like I say, we'll be going through this later. You can see, so actually in the Dremel, you do get your, um, you get your jeweler's rouge. So we're going to be using that. So this one here, mine just happens to be a little bit bigger, but it's exactly the same. And you've got some of the lovely felt pads. And so I'm going to be working with those as well. You've got different uh, abrasive wheels. So you can see there different, different sizes. So again, it's thinking about when we looked at the handheld tools, you know, we don't wanna to introduce too many scratches to things. So just be really mindful when you're working with these, you know, th maybe think about it. Do I need to go uh, with, you know, such a rough abrasive surface? Am I going to be doing more, more harm than good? So, but you've got a, a big variety in there. You've got different uh, drill bits as well. So that's, that's your Dremel, if you were gonna work with that. So I'm just gonna move that out of the way because we're gonna work with the one that I've got set up. <clears throat> so you can see here, mine is uh, very, very similar, but so I'm just gonna be holding this bit here, but it just means I can talk to you uh, without having to turn it on and off. I can just use my foot to do that. Okay, so if we have a think about it, so if we're thinking about um, working with uh, our sterling silver, so we've made, we've made a ring. So if we have a look, we've made a ring. And I've, I've demoed this a lot of times where I've done soldering um, and I, so I've got a piece of sterling silver wire and I've soldered the ring. So I often show you that on a show, but what I don't often get to show you is all the different processes then to get it. So from when it looks like this, which is sort of quite an ugly piece of uh, uh, metal, really, it doesn't even, you, you might not even know that it's silver, to something that, you know, then goes and looks like that. So where it's really lovely and shiny, so you can see the ones that I'm wearing that are round, nice, bright and shiny, um, so that's what we're going to have a look at and all the different processes there. So it's a good, good time to really go into some detail of how we get it looking like that to something much, much nicer. So you can see there where it's really, you know, silver as we know it, really. OK, so I'll have made my, um, made my uh, ring, which you can see. So to, to get the best uh, that I can on the soldering, I've got a straight edge there. So what I want to do is I'm going to now shape this. So all, all the time, I guess what we're thinking about as well is what you're using on, um, on metals. So silver is actually quite soft, a soft metal. So what we want to think about now is we, everything that we do, we're thinking about it's conscious decisions of the marks or the surface um, that we want to create on, these, on the metal. So with this one, what I need to do is I need to make it round. So we can see here at the top, there's lots of gaps in there. So if you're looking from the top down, you can see I've got a big gap here. So what I don't want to do at the moment, I, don't, I just want to shape the metal. I don't want to give it a texture. So I'm going to go with a nylon hammer and I'm just going to take it down. Not, not too much like this because I don't want to make it too much bigger, but I'm looking to get rid of that gap in between the silver and the ring mandrel. So I'm just giving that a knock round there. So what I'm, what I'm really wary is, I, I, I don't want to introduce too many marks to that silver. So that's why I'm using a, a nylon hammer. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going. You can see already just a few taps and that is coming into a much nicer round. A nice circle there. So again, we're thinking it's a 3D object, so we know that we've got it round looking like that. But what we want to make sure is that we've also got, move some of these out of the way. I'm just going to bring in the block. Okay, so I'm just now going to go around. So if you have a look, if you, I don't know if you can see on the block, if I hold it, if I hold it like that, maybe you can see. So we thought, if you can see from the side, you can see there, it's, although it looked like it was nice and round, you can see there, we definitely need to give it some attention at the top and then turn it over. So we want to get rid of the gap in the same way that there was the gap in the ring mandrel. We want to get rid of that gap. 
there. So I'm going to pop, pop the block down. Watch my fingers. And I work my way all the way around. Much better. So I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to do the same there. Hopefully that's looking a lot flatter. But as, you, as you're looking at it there, you can really see, now I haven't put this, I've soldered it and I haven't put it in the pickle. So we'll see how much of that discoloration uh, we can get rid of. So it's looking, it's looking much uh, neater, it's looking more ring shape, but it's certainly not looking very shiny. So if I take this off, and we'll have a look at some of the tools that we're gonna work with. So first of all, I'm going to look around it. And I can see that I have actually got, I have got some sort of the, when I've soldered it, I've actually got a little bit of solder that's come out from the join here. So what I can do, I can start to have a look maybe. So the first thing, the first tool I'm going to go with is going to be maybe a needle file. I'm just going to start, so I'm working with a round needle file because the shape I'm working with is round. And I'm going in one direction. And then, so I'm sort of going at a diagonal angle. And I'm just starting to get rid of some of the balls of solder that are on there. So what I'm doing, if you can, have, if you can see, I'm actually working in a very, very small area. I'm not doing that. Okay, I'm taking this very, very sort of slow, considered movements. And you start to see some of the little flecks of, of silver. So what we don't want to do is we don't want to take too much away. And I am using the round one, because like I say, so what, what that's doing is that's following the shape of the piece that I'm making. If I, uh, say, maybe went with this one, the needle file. So if you have a look at the top. This is really, really flat. So when I'm filing into it, especially if I'm really super enthusiastic, what I've actually done there is I've taken that from the round. Can you see? And I've, I've added in scratches, but I've also added in a flat angle there. You can just see it, sort of that, that sort of flash of uh, luster going across there. So by using that flat file I've done that now that can be really useful say if I wanted to maybe um, flatten this edge to solder something on but I don't want to do that at the moment all I'm looking to do is neaten up in here so I'm going one direction sort of going in the other the opposite direction there and turn it over and bring that in okay so what that might have done, I'm trying to keep it in a working area of maybe about, it's probably about five millimetres or so. It's not very, not very much. And you can see I'm, it's quite controlled movements as well. What I don't want to do is I don't want to, in, by doing that, I've introduced some scratches. Now, I need to do that because I need to get rid of some of the, that, that area where the solder has sort of made a bit of a mess. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to introduce scratches all over into this lovely bit that, you know, we can just polish up. So just be really, really mindful when you're using something really, you know, as abrasive as that. Okay. So what we can look at now, <clears throat> so if I move these ones out of the way, and we'll have a look at this one. <clears throat> so these are really good because they're obviously shaped in that cone. So we know that we can do, um, the inside, the outside, in the same way we're looking at that, um, the round needle file, we want that round edge as well. So if you've got one of these, you've obviously got that, that wooden cone that is the, the core that's going to give it some structure. If you didn't have that, there's not going to be um, very much strength to it. And so when you put the pressure on the, the metal, it's just going to buckle. So you keep it on this, on this wooden, the wooden frame. So if we have a look at these and we turn them up, so you can see all lots of different colours. And you can see that they are, um, this is going sort of like fine and then it gets more and more coarse. But some of them, you know, they do feel pretty similar. So if you have a look in here, you can see they are actually numbered, which is really, really useful. So that first one is number one. Let's see if we can get this one off. This one, number two. 
number three, number four, where is it, number five, and number six. So I know when I'm working, <clears throat> I'm going to follow that. So if we have a look at this one, this one is quite abrasive. So let's see how it's working. And I can hear that that is, that's pretty abrasive on there. I'm not going to do too much with this one. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. So I'm going to bring this in. There we go. And you can really hear. Again, I'm, I'm working in that small area. I don't want to go too, too wide. Like we say, we've got nice, clean, scratch-free silver there. But it's just this small area that we are trying to neaten up. Okay. So I think that's starting to get rid of some other... The solder off there. So you're also looking, aren't you, for, uh, this one was a bit messy, We've got the, the, the blobs of solder, but also looking to get that, that seam that we know, we want to get rid of that so that we know, it's, we know it was there, but ideally when we've finished the ring, we don't want to see it. So again, let's have a look now. So I think what I'm going to do Bring that round. Yeah, that seam is definitely going now. I can't see any big scratches. So I think I can move on to the next grade now. What there's no point in me doing is if I've still got a really deep scratch there, I need to get any of that out before I move up because all that will happen is if I don't get that out, I'm just gonna start buffing all the way around it and make it lovely and shiny and neat, but that scratch will still be there. So I need to make sure that I've got all of that out. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to the next one. So I'm just gonna pop that on. And let's go again. So I'm just working my way on the inside. And very, very quickly, and it, you know, it's, it, it, sometimes this can be quite a sort of long, laborious process, but you want to, you know, it's, it's, it's fine jewellery that you're making, so you want to make sure that you're, you know, doing the best job that you can. Now, doing it this way, obviously, is going to take longer. This is what we're using here, all hand tools, nothing motorised yet. We're doing everything by hand, which is a really, really lovely traditional process. Um, and it can be very satisfying, very therapeutic, and you will see the difference in the end. So if we start, I've still got a bit of a, a dent in there. So you can actually see what I mean. So because I'd sort of, uh, d when I'd shown you of how, how if we use the, uh, that needle file, you can see, you can still see the flat edge there and I've actually caught it a little bit. But if we pretend that that's not there. So, we can pretend it was deliberate. So, what I'm going to do is then I'm going to move on to this next one and work my way around. I'm, going, I'm taking it slightly to a larger area now. I'm working my way all the way. And remember, in the same way when we shape the ring, you know, look, looking at it from all angles, remember the 3D object. If you just keep going away in that same area, same area, same area, and like this, all that's going to happen is you're going to have one tiny, super uh, well done but flat area here. So you know you're thinking at, as the the object as a whole. That's looking much better now. Just going to move away. Oh, you also get little plastic bits in there, so should have removed those let's see where we are and that's the good thing is when you if you put it down you pick it up that it gets harder to work out the area that it is that you need to be buffing okay so just bring it all the way around now so we're at the quite a fine one I think we're on number four so let's start to see how this is now so 
start going there, I think. Uh, yes, we can see. So that's, that's the, that was the dodgy mark that I've put in, so we know that that's where we're working. So I'm going to turn it round and keep going like that. Okay. So still looking. It's looking very dull and grey at the moment, but it's not looking like it's got lots of scratches in, so which is what we want. We've still got lots of stages to go yet. So it's really working. So I'm on, I think, pretty much last but one of these. Okay. So let's see how this is. And you can see all the time I'm turning around to get that so it's looking neat and even. Okay. So... Let's see. So that was where our original solder seam was. So I've got one more. So this is obviously the finest. Let's bring that down. Okay. So. I think I've gone as far as I can with the cone. So what I'm going to do now is, so definitely want to keep all those really abrasive pieces out of the way. So if we have a look now. So I'm going to start using the, uh, the, uh, the emery stick. Now, what I don't want to do is I don't want to work on something like that because that is, is way coarser than even the number, the number one on there. So definitely don't want to go to one. I don't even think I want to go to number two either, because again, that's pretty coarse. So I might start at, at three. So if we look at where we are, which is here, so the, the original seam and all that sort of the mess that we had on there was here. So let's have a look how it's going to start to, yeah. So you can see I'm going along and there we go. So we can see now it's really quite satisfying that it's starting to come up nice and shiny. And what we're looking, really looking for now is that, that we can't see that seam at all. Okay, so I'm going to work my way around. Okay, and there we go. And that's starting to look much shinier. Okay, so we're still on that one. We're still on our, there we are, number three for this one. So I'm going to do a little bit at the sides. And we can really start to see this looking looking like the silver. Again, not too much so that we don't want to introduce any flat edges. So now I'm going to, I'm going to move to number four. Hopefully we should start to see it looking. Every, every time we go to that smoother buffer, we're going to get shinier and shinier. Oh, I needed to be careful then. I got a bit too enthusiastic, and I don't know if you heard, if you hear, if you can hear the difference here. So I will do it. This is not what you want. You don't want that. So again, because it's introducing those scratches. Uh, so I've gone to four. Here we go. So here we are. Buff to smooth any imperfections, number five. There we are. We can really, really start to see this nice shine now coming through. And all being well, that seam will have disappeared. It's really starting to, you know, you can, there's no doubt now that this is, this is silver. Uh, and I'm now going to go to number six. So this is saying polish to give nails a high gloss finish. So we want that high gloss finish on here. see how this is looking now. 
So if we work our way around, let's find, so our original seam was here on this side. And we can see it's looking much shinier now, much neater and shinier. So if we look at what it, what it did look like before, something like that. So it looks, it, it's, it's a lot smoother, <clears throat> it's a lot shinier. So what we can do now is we can start maybe and use some of the, uh, some of the, the, the different mops with the Dremel. So you could at this point, if you wanted to, you could use your polishing cloth and you could leave it like that. But if you want to, I mean, you want to have a go with your, uh, with your Dremel. So what I'm going to do with mine, I'm going to have a little look on the, uh, on the inside and we'll see some of the effects that it's going to give us by using some of the different, um, different heads. So if, um, so I'm doing it by hand, what I'd done is I'd use my, if you remember, I'd use my needle file to go in and um, get rid of some of the, some of the solder on the inside. So with this one, what we'll do is we'll use, uh, we'll use one of the, the heads here. So I'm gonna use this one now. It's probably like a, a um, midway uh, of the um, different abrasive ones. So sort of slightly smoother than all of these. So I'm going to go with this one. I don't want to go with anything like that, that is, is super, super abrasive, because I'm just going to, um, it, it, there's not that much to do. Um, so I don't want to add in loads of scratch marks. So, so I've got just the, the key here. So I'm just going to close this up a little bit to get this bit in. So let's just pop that in here. And we'll start and have a look. So something, a head like this, it's going to be ideal for going on the on the inside. So if you're working at home, maybe you'd prefer to work, um, so, you know, against uh, against your bench peg, something like that. So I'm just going to take it nice and slow. So if I put my foot on, you can see it's starting to go round. If you're going to do this an awful lot, you'd, you know, eye protection, uh, wearing a mask, something like that. I'm only going to do little bits. So you can see in here. So I'm going on the inside. And you can see uh, what by doing this, because this is coarser than the work that we've done so far, what I'm actually doing is, yes, I am taking away silver, but I am introducing scratches and marks. So I'm sort of showing you a sort of doubling up really. By hand, we've taken this a step further than we've gone there. But so doing something like that, that's gonna take away all of the solder um, that goes in there. And you can see I'm, re I'm not sort of really revving it. If I've got loads of revs, I'm not going super fast. I'm just going in, good control, again in that small area, and we'll get rid of some of that. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of that one. So what you're doing really is the same, same principle as um, uh, when you're doing it by hand. So maybe I, I would also say do the, do the process by hand first. So you, you sort of, you, you're learning of, of how much, you know, uh, you know, sort of the different stages, different processes that you, you can put the metal through um, and then maybe have a go with your Dremel. So now I've just got like a, a, a silicon head on this one. So let's have a look at this one. So again, so I'm just gonna start and go in. I'm really just working into that, that scene there. So I'm gonna turn over and just getting rid of some of it here. And again, around there. Okay. So let's move to the next one. And I'll show you, it doesn't particularly need it, but I'll show you in case, because they often come with the Dremel and they are really, really good. And they're great for getting into, um, if you've got lots of detail maybe on pieces. So this one is, um, you can see on the, it's sort of got the, on the wheel head, it's got a, it's got a brass uh, bristles on it. So this is gonna give you, it comes up very, very, very shiny. It might introduce a couple of scratches. Um, so you, you'd need to, um, clean it up afterwards, but this is going to get rid of, uh, uh, it's, it's very, very good for going in. Say maybe if you've got granulation where you, you've added detail in and you need to get sort of around the balls, this, this works really, really well for that. Um, so I'm going to just start this. What you might get though, is you might get a slight gold tinge to it. 
which is just sort of the, 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 the brass coming off on it. But we're going to give it a polish as well. You, so you can see how that now is really starting to polish up. And again, it's going to work a bit more in there. So I won't do everything, I won't complete everything, so then you can see the contrast really. But that seam is definitely fading away and that's what we want. So we can see now how that is looking. So if you remember what it did look like, you know, it's starting to look really, really nice. <clears throat> so now what we can do is, so if we take this out. So the next one I'm gonna work with I'm going to work with, and I'll show you what they look like beforehand. So this is obviously one that I've used. This comes, you can get these in the Dremel. So I'll just tighten that up. <clears throat> so that is going to be, uh, so in that when you get the Dremel, uh, there is a pack in the Dremel um, and it's got uh, different felt mops in it. So this one, and they'll, they'll look like they're, they're white, um, but this one has actually got some rouge on it already. So if we have a look at this one, so I'm gonna start off with this, uh, the jeweler's rouge, and you'll also get that in the, um, you'll get that in the, in the pack as well. It's gonna get a little bit messy. So I don't wanna be sat right over, uh, face over this, because you might get a little bit of um, uh, bits sort of fly up. So you just, I'm looking, from the side and it's going to look like it's going to go really really uh, dark and mucky but power through that because then you will get this absolutely glorious shine coming through so we can see all that hard work you can really see it starting to come through now what you'll find is this piece <clears throat> I'm holding it in my hand it, we've got lots of friction here it might get hot so you can either wear, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily wear gloves. You could wear maybe some tape to protect your fingers or um, just tape breaks, really. It's quite good, you know, that you've got a feel for um, how warm it is as well. So we can see how this is really starting to polish up nicely. So we'll turn it over. So it's always remembering with whatever jewellery it is you're working with, <clears throat> you know, it's a 3D object and you need to look at it from, from all angles. And let's start to give that a lovely polish there. So I'm going to work all the way around so you can see the difference. Okay. And again, so I'm going to come round. I'm going to do a bit more. So put, it's a little bit of pressure I've got on, not too much, but I am holding that ring quite firmly. And it's really important that you go through all those stages and do them, do them properly because what you don't want to do is you don't want to um, have got, got to this point and then you can see lots and lots of scratches because what you'll have to do is just go back to the very, very beginning. So it's really important to get rid of those scratches stage by stage. So let's see where we are. I think that's looking okay. I'm gonna go a bit on this side. and work my way around. So with all these, what you can do as well is give it a clean afterwards in um, some warm soapy water. So I'm gonna take that felt mop off. And now I'm gonna go with this one. So you see this one's a little bit more open, softer fabric mop. And I'm going to work with, so you can get lots and lots of different um, polishing compounds. I'm going to work with a, a finer one. So this was a, <clears throat> a special one that was gifted to me by the polishing guru, who's an absolute expert in it. So this is a little bit finer. I'm going to really start to go in now and work that. And we can see how beautifully that is coming up. 
Okay, and again, I'm going to do the same here. Let's have a look how we're looking now. So, if I get my cloth now, so I would have, I would have um, given this, uh, like I say, so um, just a, a, a wash, warm soapy water, get rid of that. We go we now give this a lovely <coughs> good rub here. So let's see how this is starting to look now. So remember what we're what we're ideally hoping for is that we don't get to see any of that seam. We can see what it looked like before. And this is coming up really nicely. So I'm just holding it, giving it that polish from all angles. You know, and if you think back to when we started the process, you know, silver, before we've done all of this, can look quite dull, flat, very, very different to how it was or how it's looking now. So if we bring that in. Give that a nice polish there. So you see I'm just bringing that round. So a little bit on the inside. And start to come there. So we can see now the difference that that's going to make. So if we look at the original one, and then that has actually got, it's actually this section here, <coughs> excuse me. So if we look at it, uh, yes, both of those. So at the very, very beginning, when we were shaping the ring uh, on, the, on the ring mandrel, we talked about uh, the different marks that we could put onto, onto the silver. So if you remember, I actually put the, uh, use the nylon jaw hammer um, just to shape it down onto the mandrel. If then, if I decided that I wanted to add that dappled effect, which is here, you can see, what I would have done is, if I just swap that over, so if I pop that on there. So whereas before we'd use this one, the nylon, and it hadn't left any marks. So if we want to add that to give us some extra shine, but it's gonna give us texture, I could have used this side of the hammer and just so it's metal on metal. And what will happen with that is you can already see it's starting, we're putting impressions in the metal. That's gonna give us added, added shine. So that's something to, um, to remember. So if you're, if you're finding that you got to that point and you just can't, you know, maybe um, it, 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 you've, you've polished and polished, but you just can't get, uh, get um, the little marks that maybe you just can't get out. That's always an option that maybe you could texture it. Um, it's, a, it's a really, really good exercise to, to do a ring where you've got no texture and you're just working through that filing and polishing to get it super, super neat and tidy. But sometimes if that's just not happening for you, what you can do is you can use that, that effect of of the, the texturing, that dappling with the, the hammer, and that can disguise a seam, or if there's sort of like a little bit of, um, if, it's, if it's not particularly neat. What you need to bear in mind though is what you're doing when you're putting that metal onto the metal, so that the metal of the hammer, and you're squashing that silver in between your mandrel and the hammer, what's gonna happen is it's gonna sort of spread out a little bit, and what will happen is it will increase the size of the ring. So you need to bear in mind that if you've made your lovely uh, plain band as a certain size, what's gonna happen is then if you then go over and you then add in this texture, 
what can happen is it's, it's going to increase in size. So that's something to bear in mind. So especially if you're, I don't know, doing commissions, you, you know, you're making for a friend and you, and you know that it, you know, it needs to be a particular ring size, you need to account for that as well. So thinking about it of different finishes that you've got, you know, can consider that. So there's lots and lots of different marks that we can put into, um, into the metal, but you really, really need to think about um, what that's going to do to the, you know, the, the size and shape of the piece. So if we sort of give that another little rub. So if we now take it, so this one, we've hardly done anything with this one. So if we start to give this, so I haven't done any of the, the processes that I've done on that one. So this one, I've shown you really from start to finish. So if we take this one now, so this one, we knew, we remember what it was, it was like before. It was, um, it was looking pretty dull. So if we now go along, so we haven't got any, uh, we haven't worked through any of our um, buffers or uh, the, the emery cone. We're just going to use the polishing cloth. So I'm being a bit of force, a bit of effort in here. We can see it's actually coming up really nicely lots of um you know polishing like this is is a little bit of um you know how much work you're prepared to put in you know if your hands start to ache just stop for a bit pop it down you can always come back but this is actually coming up really really nicely it's a lovely polishing cloth i'm going to work my way around so you can see already so what a couple of minutes if that with just the cloth on its own on that very, very dull silver. It's really, really, really making a difference. So like I say, so we haven't worked through any of those, the mops, no compound, no felt, abrasive. This is just elbow grease with this cloth. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Here we go. You can see how nicely this is coming up. But that would have that would have probably been an incredibly, incredibly boring demo if I'd have just done this for 50 minutes. But you can see it really is bringing it up beautifully. So if I just keep working around. And that is bringing it up really nicely. But this is a good example of thinking about the, the stages and the, um, the processes. So I just dive straight in and I've gone to the very, very last bit with this. And what I haven't done is I haven't paid any attention to the seam with this one. So this is going to give us a good example of how from one angle it's going to look really, really nice and shiny. So if we have a look where we are, give that, that's actually going to be the front of the ring. So if I have a look at this, so we just jump straight to that last stage there. Just give it a last bit all round. So we jump to the last stage <coughs> at that one. So if I actually put it on, it's not looking that much different. We've got a bit more shine on this one. And remember, this one has got that, that dappled effect, so it's, gonna, it's also going to look shinier. But this one, we've spent the time and we've worked that, gone through the, through the grades of the, um, the emery boards, the emery cone, and we've got rid of that soldered seam. So we know we've got that continuity all the way around. This one it looks lovely and shiny, which it absolutely does. But if we work our way around, we can see we didn't really do anything to that soldered seam. We can still see where it is here. So ideally, that's not, we don't want to see that when jewellery. It looks quite nice from there, but it's, it's worth, I would say, going through those different stages and using you know, tools like this that really help you because they are numbered so you can work your way through and these ones as well. So again, so if we look at this one, what we could do is we absolutely could start again and work our way, work our way down. But 
think if you if you remember that process that you know if you've got a scratch in there get rid of that scratch at the very very beginning it's really really tempting to jump to that final stage before you've tidied everything else up but it is it's a false economy really of your time because it it will stand out so all those scratches make sure that you're getting them out um, you know stage by stage so that then you've got that really really lovely bright shine and it means that you know you're looking after your silver silver then <clears throat> so we'll give this a last polish and hopefully that has shown you how useful a, a tool that these cloths are you know that they're taking your jewelry that you know you spent a long time making or that you know it might be a piece of jewelry that um you know that, that is, is well loved and maybe you haven't made but it's something that you know you really really like and, and you want to look after um, and how quickly that brings it back up to be that lovely that lovely shine so you can see there so hopefully that has shown that has shown all the different stages of um, your forming it your filing polishing cleaning and getting it so it's lovely and bright and sparkling so thanks very much for being with me this morning jewelry makers i'll see you soon happy 13th birthday jewelry maker you are officially a teenager over the last 13 years you have brought us the most amazing products and fantastic inspiration so thank you so much and have a wonderful birthday i'm very excited to come and celebrate with you hi charlie here summer street director i just wanted to wish jewelry maker a happy 13th birthday Hi you lovely people, happy 13th birthday. Love seeing you when we take over from me at one o'clock each day. Have a great time, keep on making. Happy 13th birthday, jewelry maker. Happy birthday. Happy 13th birthday, jewelry maker. I can't wait uh, to share the celebrations and some cake with you guys. Tune in for the epic deals that we've got in store for you. Uh, and happy birthday once again. Hi, my name's Susie Mellon and I just want to wish Jewelry Maker a very happy 13th birthday. Mwah. The deal of the day on Friday is a conch collection, which comprises of a kit with three strands of conch in. Um, we've also got new development of carved conch, and we've also got a few individual pieces, collectible pieces, such as a donut. So for us to get conch into the business, it's a really long process. As we do with all our suppliers, we wanna make sure it's ethically sourced, it's being produced in um, factories where you know everyone's being treated correctly. Um, with conch, it's obviously a natural product so it takes us a little bit longer because we have to fill in extra paperwork get extra certification and it can take us about um, six or seven months to actually get it here so this collection has been in development for a really long time and I can't wait to bring it to the customers at Jewelry Maker Happy 13th birthday Jewelry Maker Let the party begin 13 days of banging deals coming your way. Shitting. Happy, Happy birthday, Jewelry Maker. We hope you love all of the products that we've been developing for you over the last year. Happy 13th birthday, Jewelry Maker. Hello Jewelry Maker, John Scott here. Just wanted to wish you a very, very happy birthday. 13 years, my word. 13 years, you've not had me on enough, have you? I'll see you very soon. Have a fantastic 13 days. Happy birthday, Jewelry Maker. From the Hobby Maker team. Happy birthday, Jewelry Maker. 13 years of crafting your own gemstone jewelry. And I know this birthday celebration is even more exciting gemstones to come. Happy birthday. Jewelry Makers, this Saturday is the closure of Jewelry Makers 13th birthday party celebrations. Boo! But don't worry.